One of the first times I ever used, I'm 12 years old, I smoked PCP. Yeah. Well, but that had to literally change the function. Oh, of brain. I am sure. I am so sure. It, it, absolutely, it did. I'm Danica Kluth, a grad student living in Fort Collins, Colorado, and you are listening to the Vance Grove Podcast. Welcome back to the podcast. I'm glad you're here. Today, Jason Bachman of Strange Donuts returns. Jason is an entrepreneur and a very interesting guy. And during this conversation, he opens up on a level that I've never heard on another podcast. I am excited that he was willing to come by and I'm grateful that he was willing to share. Sharing is what people do when they walk in here to do a legacy interview. It's a chance for them to put out their stories and be able to capture their wisdom so they can pass it down to future generations. And now that we offer to transcribe your interview and put it into a leather-bound book, you now have a chance to write an autobiography potentially in a single day. This is a wonderful experience to give to a loved one, and it's a great way for you to be able to capture things that matter to you and pass them down to future generations. If you're interested in learning more, go to LegacyInterviews.com. All right, without further ado, let's head to this very engaging conversation with my man, Jason Bachman. Jason Bachman, welcome back to What's the up? podcast. Good to see you. What is new, man? What's going on? <clears throat> I was, at, I feel like when we talk, I got to get ready to talk to you or something. But I was like, man, I don't need to like, I feel like nothing and everything, to be honest. Like uh, so much has changed in the past couple of years. And um, I don't know, new businesses, new projects, divorce, moving, move. I was in a little bitty apartment for a long time and like uh, just living like it very simply. Right. And um, yeah, I don't know. Like uh, one of the times we talked, I was talking about, uh, you know, mental health stuff with me. I've like gotten a bunch of help. I feel like I'm a different person in a lot of different ways. And so, man, it's shocking for me to hear that you would ever need help because you are like, you, you know, you're the gas man. Like you show up, <laughs> You're like, you know, pumping everybody up. It's yeah. Like life seems easy for you. Yeah. No, I think in some ways there's like a lot of practice that went into it. And so like almost to a detriment, I think for a long, long time, I would be like, um, my head was so crazy that I just couldn't trust the way that I thought and felt. And I would like, I could act very good. Right. Like it doesn't matter like how I feel. I would take right action. And um, I didn't ever really pay attention to the way that I felt. And I think that like, there's like a pendulum of like, you know, letting your feelings control you or me. And, um, but there was just these things, these like, that would constantly be in my head of like, you know, I'm a failure, I'm a Hoosier, I'm a piece of shit, I'm never going to be anything. Like in the middle of doing good things, I, I I would just be tearing myself up. And that was like just a constant. And um, I when like, your voice is doing that, <clears throat> is there any part of it that's right? That that like you are doing something worthy of your brain, your voice of resistance being like, knock this shit off? Um, if, ask, ask me that in another way. Well, so... You know, like my voice in my head, the one that's like telling me to get out of bed and to mm -hmm. get going and you're lazy and what would your dad think? Like in some ways, it, I hate it, right? Like mm -hmm. there's because it, it creates like a dynamic between me and my whatever inner voice. Yeah. But sometimes I'm like, thank God I got all nervous about that and I didn't feel good about it. And I felt like a piece of shit because I was not doing the right thing. And that voice got me going the right direction. I understand. I would be doing the right thing. And regardless. I would feel and think that way. Right. I do think there's something in me that like there's, it would be like them. They think you're a piece of shit also. And so I would prove it to them. I don't know who they are, but I would work so hard and go so hard to prove it to whoever doubted me. You know what I mean? And really it like no one ever really did doubt me. I was the only person that like hated Jason and, um, but I think that like, it's a double edge. It's like an asset and a defect, right? That like I would go so hard and accomplish so much, but there was never any kind of like um, stopping point or gratification. Like I, or I, I won, like I won this lifetime achievement award 
I sold a company and got a bunch of money, right? I like my daughter was supposed to be born with complications and she was born like entirely healthy. I like there was all these big things that happened. And I was talking to a I was like, man, I feel like with any of these things, people would like take a minute and say, wow, good job. And I feel nothing like I feel no kind of happiness at all. And um, that was a problem. So like that was the one of the first times that I recognized that something was wrong. And um, so when yeah. when like. When you were not happy, did you know that other people were happy? Were you looking around being like, that guy shouldn't be as happy as me? Look, I got the this thing going. Never. No. Here's the fun. I went, there was something wrong with my nipple. I had like a little lump in my nipple, right? And so I went to the doctor. There's these two doctors. They were very attractive girls, right? And it was weird. I'm like standing there. I'm kind of buff, whatever, right, dude? And this, these, these girls are just rubbing my nipples. And it was going on for a while. It was, I don't know why I told that part of it. But like, they're asking me these questions. One of them just kept touching me and the other one was asking me these questions. And I was like, these are kind of weird questions. Like, I'm here for my nipple, right? And this lady just, she goes, how long have you been depressed? And I was like, I'm not. And she's like, well, I asked you all these questions because I felt like something was wrong. Uh, And if you have like a 20% on these questions, then you are... um, uh clinically depressed all kinds of stuff like you know do you think of harming yourself do you think like, all, all kinds of stuff right and she's like you have like a 95 percent on this survey and i and she was like are you like are you think are you are you gonna harm yourself and i was like no lady i'm here for my nipple right and she was like uh well i think you should take a look at this and um I, and i said i was like never like I would never, I'm, I, for a long time, I haven't been a person to like, oh, I'll hide what I'm thinking or feeling. I'll tell anybody what I'm thinking or feeling. You know what I mean? I'm not like ashamed of like, like what flows through my head. So it wasn't like secretive. And I just told these, I was like, look, like this is the only head I've ever had. I am not thinking or feeling abnormally. This is the way that I am. Right. And I thought I was like, don't, and I did say like, don't most people think this way? And she was like, absolutely not. And my response to her was, well, they are lying, right? They're lying to you about these answers because I don't understand how people would not answer the way that I did. And um, I went I went to a counselor after that and started like a very like like surface level process of, uh, of, of getting better. And one of the first things that the guy told me to do Cause I would get complimented a lot, right? Like I've been sitting since you've, I've sat here, you've complimented a couple of times. And I like the guy said, I need to write down the compliments and I need to say, I accept that. He's like, it's going to be very awkward for a while, but when someone gives you a compliment, you need to say, I accept that. And it started to like sink into my brain a little bit, like really hear people. Like for instance, if somebody said like cool sweatshirt, I'd be like, Oh, well it was on sale. I got, you know what I mean? I would discount everything. Anybody yeah. That's a part of me, your personality right, about good things about me. I would be like, no, I would discount it and like not accept it. And, um, I said, um, to this guy, I was like, you know, after a little bit of us doing that, I was like, you know, I've, I've, there's two people that hate Jason and one is me and the other is my now ex-wife, you know? And he was like, well, we can work on you. You know, and um, that, that and that that just started this big process. And so, how did you choose the person that you were going to be like? I'm going to tell you all of my inner workings in my mind. This I've, I would rather do that with a stranger than like talk about baseball. Like I very rarely small talk. You know, I'm like, what do you love? You know, what do you what brings you joy? Like to strangers. And so I've I, I feel like for a long time, I've I, I I don't care. I'll tell anybody anything. Yeah, you're extremely open to strangers. You're also a guy that is broken free from a literal cult. So, like, yeah. you worrying about coming under the spell of somebody is not altogether dangerous. But I I feel this with other counselors. Like, when somebody says, oh, I'm thinking about going to see counselors, on the one hand, I'm like, hey, is there anything I can do, right? Is there mm-hmm. something? And I think there is a place for somebody that has seen a lot, is, like, recognizes their limitations, but all 
therapists, psychologists, counselors, they all have an orientation. They have a way that they believe the mind works. And some of them might be like, oh, hey, Jason, we got some pills here. And all you got to do is just take a couple. And then I've done that. Better. I went to a doctor and he was like, uh, what? I mean, this is, I would, I had been smoking PCP for like a week. Like every, I was up, I was fucked up for a week. And, uh, and I went to this guy and he was like, what have you been doing? And I was like, I've been smoking PCP for about a week. <laughs> and he was like, take this pill. And if you don't, if this doesn't work, you're lost. Right. I've been to those people that just medicate you. I hardly take ibuprofen now. You know what I mean? I'm like, I don't you taking PCP. Oh, for a while. I don't know. I I did that for a long, a long time. <laughs> I did that one of the first times I ever used I'm 12 years old I smoked PCP yeah what well, but that had to literally change the function oh of that, right? I am sure I am so sure of it. It, it absolutely it did but like this guy the cool thing about this counselor that I saw is he said um I would tell him stuff and he wouldn't be like how does that make you feel you know he wasn't that dude just parroting stuff back to me he would say, okay, here's a solution. Take this action, right? And he would text me. He would say stuff like, you're a good man. You deserve to be happy. You are not crazy, right? And I end up going, doing this, like, other therapy stuff. When like, some of, like, you know, I feel a little more comfortable talking about this stuff. I grew up, like, very dysfunctionally, right? And, like, some of, like, the... um like the uh the symptoms of like growing up this way like you know like in a i don't need to get too far into it but a very abusive upbringing right is like not trusting your own intuition right and so like when i i would not trust the way that i thought or felt at all and now that that stuff is like starting to clear up i can i i don't have to like ask permission from anybody about like the way that I think or feel or what I want to do. I'm like, this is right for me. And I do this now. So, I mean, you're like the biggest, you know, strongest, but also like most gracious, happiest person. So to me, listening to you say you had struggles mm -hmm. frightens me a little bit. Like I feel myself being like, Oh shit. If, if Jason can have problems and fucking, any one of us could get, of could get pulled do, down though, by that. Right? Of course, I think all of us do, though. And I think that's some of the stuff that, like, it's, I don't know. The ma male depression or male, like, whatever it is that gets them down, mm -hmm. man, I am real scared of that. And it's because I've started hitting the age where I have other people around me. Maybe I don't spend that much time with them, but they got, like, sucked into some hole. Mm -hmm. And, like, man, I don't want that. Like, I'm fortunate that no one I'm close with has taken their life. But, mm -hmm. like, one of my good friends, his 30-year-old son killed himself. Mm. Like, smart guy, driven, was an engineer, like, great mind. But something just wasn't right. And I feel like it is happening with increasing frequency. Well, what in the hell is going on? Why? Why is this happening? I don't know. I think an easy thing to say is, like, we live this life now of like, look at me. And I, this has been said a million times. This isn't like an original thought, but like you ever get caught on your phone, just looking at Instagram. Yeah. Just Twitter, Boy, like, Facebook, time. whatever. And like, by the end of doing that, I am no matter what I'm doing, I'm a, I'm a piece of shit. You know what I mean? Like these people's lives look so good and there is something wrong with me. And I think it's weird. Like, I don't know. There's not like, um, I am fortunate to have, really good friends a group of, of I'd, I'd say a large group of good friends and then a tight group of like people that i can tell anything to you know i can be undressed in front of like uh and feeling some sense of belonging and not only belonging but not individualism like oh i'm not the i'm not alone in the way that i think and feel i'm not alone thinking this is wrong and I think a lot of people don't have that anymore. And I, and I, I don't know. I see people just like trying to look good and I'm like, man, we don't have to. Well, and they're not trying to look good in the context of we're doing this ceremony where everybody's bringing their wives and their kids to this thing. It's like, I'm going to go on parade all the time over a digital space where there's nobody here interacting with me. It's just adulation. 
you know, one of the biggest social technologies I think we've lost in society is uh, community organizations, like the things that people get go to to like spend time with one another. Church, temple, sure, that or yeah. or like Rotary or whatever, like the the groups that people used to get together so that they ran into people that were like them, kind of, but also pretty different has gone virtually down to zero. So if you don't intrinsically go out and find your own group of friends, you don't have a ready-made group of friends. Most people are totally adrift islands in their own houses. And for and exacerbated by COVID, right? I was thinking about this. Like, I'm a, a pretty accepting open person, right? I listen to, like, political podcasts on, like, both sides. And I, I, I like, need to pump the brakes on listening to any of that shit, for real. Because it just, like... It's all the hate, it seems like, anymore. There is no, like, common bond anymore where we meet and, like, what like what you're talking about. But I started, like, fucking hating people, right? Like, I'll see people now, I like, and I'm still, like, working out of it and whatever. I, like, I don't need to apologize for my judgment. I'll be, like, super, like, I'll see people with masks on still, right? And, like, I just saw somebody walking in this building with, like, they put their mask on their kid i don't know their situation i don't know if like the kid has leukemia or whatever you know i have no fucking clue but i was like fuck you like what are you doing this for and i heard something this guy said i feel this way like exactly what you're describing like i'm particularly if it's a man if it's a if it's a kid or a mom like i'm like all right whatever they're scared yeah for a man i'm like uh you're not adding to the positivity of things that are working for sure I haven't said anything because I haven't, I'm, I'm like, I'll, I'll ask people stuff sometimes, right? Like, hey, why do you do this? What do you do that? Whatever. I feel like that topic, for whatever reason, and I, I know the reason. I mean, I was like the brunt of like a bunch of bullshit. I remember being on like, like business was so hard, right? During that. And I, when I see that, I associate it with like, I was on some, we were following everything the CDC was saying to do, right? Until I was like, wait, this is fucking stupid. Right. Yeah. It, it, everybody tried that was like, hey, I'm going to band together. Right. We see these people singing songs on their balcony in Italy. We can get along like them. Right. I'll do whatever. Yeah. And then you find out like, oh, they're not asking. They're telling. Yes. And they're telling and they're not actually following the same rules that they're telling us. Yeah. And so like this is like you're trying to wrap me up in a riddle that I'm not going to I'm not going to keep playing. Yes. And I see that. And it's a symbol of that to me. Right. Where I'm like what are you still doing this for? Like, have you not read anything about, can you imagine what the life is of a, of a man that is wearing a mask though? Like what he must be seeing, how different his life must be than yours than mine. Certainly. Yeah. Either. So somebody said this, I can't remember who it was like, and whatever, I don't care. I have friends like on ever. I I don't, I don't care. Right. What your political affiliations are or sexuality. I, I don't give a shit. I don't care. But this, this, made a lot of sense i think people who had like make america great again hats on i was like you're a fucking asshole to me like immediately i was like you're wearing a flag you're and that flag is i am not on these people's team right i'm like man fuck you dude right regardless of whether like i agree with i I, I don't know i could find things to that i agree with you this dude said that the mask being worn now is the make america great again hat of liberals right or of like the far left right and I'm like, and then the Make America Great, like, those are, like, far-right weirdos. Like, I'd see, I I hit a point, I started getting, like, ashamed of the American flag. I'm, I, lo- I love America, right? I'm, like, very aware of, like, you know, the, I'm, I'm grateful for the things that we have here and, 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 and the luxuries that were afforded that most people in the world don't get, right? I've lived in, gone to, spent a lot of time in those places. I would see people with, like, these MAGA hats and then like American flags on their truck. And I associated the two and I started being like, Ugh, when I saw the American flag, but it goes exactly to your point about people needing to belong because wearing that hat, while it definitely alienates you from a bunch of people, there's a whole bunch of people that are like, Oh yeah. Like yeah. you go from being the person that nobody noticed in the grocery store to every once in a while, having a guy like give you a nod, a nod like, yeah, a little head shake. And, uh, you know, you talk about people wanting validation in their lives, and that's that's one as there, if the, as much hate as you're willing to put up with, mm-hmm. then you get adulation by your side. Yeah, I. And then, come to find out, most of the hate you're that's coming your way, or most of the adulation that's coming your way, 
is fake, right? You mean like bots? Yeah. What the fuck? How crazy is it that our? Can I? I'm crying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I like. I have not talked about the Twitter files or any of the stuff that the government is doing because I think people look at it and they're like, "Ah, oh, yeah, that's just the stuff the government gets into." And you're like, "No, wait a second. Look, like, look. They were legitimately propagandizing inside of our country. Yeah. Right. I, either side doesn't matter if if it was the opposite side and Trump's White House was really good with with Twitter, we would still be like, hey, what the fuck are you doing? You're not allowed to choose what information we listen to, what information other people listen to. Fuck you. When I was in that cult, one of the first things they said to me is, don't watch the news. We will watch the news and tell you what is important. And I know I, at first, I was like, awesome. I was like, cool. These people who know better than me will tell me what to, to know. You know? And I just like ate it up. And that was, I think, one of, they would do things to shock you, right? Like, say racist shit or whatever, right? Weird, crazy stuff. And then, um, like, if you didn't buck at it, like, you know, they were seeing who bucked and, like, if and those people be cold from the herd. Gone. Yes. Yeah. And then, like, after, like, that initial stuff, that's when they started saying, like, we'll, we'll tell you what to think. And, like, it was seriously like a, uh, a relief. Like, oh, man, like, I'm worried about all these things in the world. It's awesome that I have somebody else that will take care of that for me. Yeah, I strongly believe that most of the topics that people believe politically, Mm -hmm. the only reason they're watching the pundit, and it could be Ben Shapiro to, you know, whoever, the young Todd Save America, right, right. All you're trying to do is be like, all right, the world is really complicated. Take this issue and tell me which side is the good guy side and which guy is the bad guy side. Now, when you're listening to it and you hear your good guy side, you're like, no, I have it all reasoned out. I understand the nuance. What you don't realize is, just like you're accusing them of only seeing these clips, all of your ideas are built on somebody being like, this guy good, that guy bad. Yeah, for sure. I, I couldn't agree more. And I, I, I listen to both of those podcasts, right? And it's crazy thinking about like, man, you take the same issue and like what they do with the information is completely different sides of it. There is zero common ground. And um, it's easy to fall into those things. but. What do you uh, what do you think happens to the human mind? Because we got here by talking about men being depressed and and having these problems, going to a counselor, potentially getting around somebody that wants to put you on medication or yeah. limit you from information. Um, ask that question one more time. Well, I don't really have a question other than to say, like, we were the, the, we got to a place where we're like, we think the media is having a really big impact on like what what we think is wrong with other people around us when really that's uh the way our minds are working i said something you see my social media stuff strange donuts uh, at all handles whatever right we had this thing it was all it was like peanut filled peanut butter blah, blah, blah. and i made this post and i said if uh i was like you know if you have a peanut allergy this is your ticket off the planet right and it was just funny whatever i, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't care <laughs> it was uh, this quip right there was a comment from alberta canada was the first one like you know you piece of shit whatever and then like all it it was like no one locally it was like california canada australia and you could see and i was looking at these i was like holy shit man these are bots like and i don't give a shit and they'd be like delete this delete your account and they're like started slamming us on like on google reviews and all this stuff and i just was like no i'm not i'm not doing any of that i just kept doing other stuff and um one guy came into the store and he was like uh shaking and i was like he's like what's up dude he was like you you said that kids should kill themselves he's a little bit older guy and i was like where when did i do that and he was like you said something and this dude it had been distilled down to this guy you know that i was telling kids they should kill themselves and i was like no man here's this post i was like this is and he was like oh that's that's it and i was like yeah and he goes uh and he bought some donuts, right? And I think that, like, uh, I don't know. That's almost like swatting you, right? Like, if you, if you like, get somebody or groups of people so worked up that they're, like, coming in to physically be in your presence, that like, because they're so angry, that's crazy. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Who's doing it? I don't know. 
Uh, I don't know. Like, what was it? How many? What was the percentage of bots that were on Twitter? It was a lot. Twenty. There, there was an, there was an, an amount. This is before the purchase went through. This is like, oh, that's right, because he started complaining, being like, whoa, whoa, whoa. He's backing out. Up. Yeah, like this, you don't really have all these users. The valuation is wrong. And I can't remember what the number was, but I don't know. I'm sure it's. I don't even know. Some of that I don't even. I'm like, I don't even care. I've tried so, like, I have like as little as I can be on social media. Yeah, but like, you're a social media king. Like, so people listening to this don't know. You you have a donut shop, and instead of it just being like oh hum, you're doing like furniture style commercials from the '80s. We're doing all kinds of stuff, and I get I get paid now by big brands to do that stuff for them, right? Like to be a consultant or to film their content or direct their content, write commercials. I do that now, and yeah, for sure I do that. I hate it. Not I I don't like what um like having to be a part of it all the time. I view it now as like a place to drop in, right? Where I used to view it as a place to get my information, a place to get validation, a place to like, ooh, how many likes does this thing get, you know? And I see my kids now, I have a six and seven year old, the way my daughter grabs the phone and she's like, hey everyone, I'm here at the park. And I'm like, holy shit, she's talking like some fucking YouTuber. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want my daughter thinking that that's what life is about you don't want her to be an instagram star hell no right i mean if that's what she wants to do that's cool you know but like no we need to have like actual skills and actual things that we're doing not like the 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 like capturing of content is is not valuable in and of itself right like if you're good at gymnastics or soccer or you know drawing and wiring a circuit or doing whatever whatever, that is like that's that's the skill not and that's the payoff the intrinsic value from that not the validation from other people saying that's good i'm starting to wonder if the way our cities are set up just like straight up the 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 way people are packed in if you actually can't have a childhood that you develop the skills that get you ready for for regular life like for me i grew up in a place where you couldn't go shoot like a 22 in my backyard, but you could definitely shoot a BB gun Mm -hmm. and I could go anywhere over my entire town. I could like ride my bike. You Mm -hmm. know, as I got older, I was able to go further and further away. You get to blow stuff up. You get to, none of that stuff happens now. I try to make that for my kids. Right. Like let them live dangerously. Right. Like, and, and we, I do. Don't you become that dad then? Aren't you like, oh, that, that dad, we can't let our kids be around that. No, dad. I, dude, it is crazy that what seems normal to me to talk about, like people are like, I wish I could talk like you or do what you, I'm like, who's telling you, you can't, you know what I'm saying? Like, no, if this is the way, and this is what feels good. And I've, I have no reservations anymore about seeing something somebody else does well and wanting that as a part of my life. Like, do we, I went, I took my kids to Disney and it was fucking awesome. It was so awesome. It was just, I just got choked up for a second. It was just me and them. It was awesome. I went and I prepaid for this thing that you had to like book months in advance. My son made a lightsaber and I was there and um, they were, uh, there's these families walking around with like, you know, Johnson Disney trip, 2013, blah, blah, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was 2021 whatever it was but like i was like man i wish i could like do that i wish i was like that guy i'm like oh it's as easy as printing the shirt just go print the shirt and you and i can do that i thought they were them and i was me and but no i can learn from them i can do that and i don't i don't care like if i'm that dad or whatever like none of them matter to me what they think and feel about me my kids matter right and um if people have something to say about that like i really don't care to listen man speaking of experiences i think actually one of the best things that happen when two men get together is when they have children like to be able to just talk about like what were those experiences that were valuable and uh yesterday i was like kind of frustrated because trying to get back to the regular life but my daughter's school that she goes to is still out of session so I take a, a day, my wife takes a day where we take off of work. And at first I was like, so resenting it. Cause I was like, I have so much work to do, but I was like, all right, but what could I do? 
And we used to, when she was an infant and COVID was going on, we used to go to the art museum. So I'd push her around in the stroller. Yeah. And I got to see the first time she ever noticed color. And she had this like euphoric giggling when she would see all the colorful paintings and stuff. So I finally take her back only now she's two years old. Mm -hmm. Her infant sister in the stroller yesterday just slept through the whole thing. But my daughter would go to these paintings and she's two years old and she would be like leaning into them as she's staring completely wide eyed at this like abstract painting of a woman without a shirt on or a giant ship with all these people on it. And you watch your children see something like she saw pictures from 1500s and she could be like the baby Jesus right there. Right. Mm -hmm. To watch a child watch something so intensely like they can with beautiful art is one of the greatest experiences of my adult fatherhood. I agree, dude. I was with my kids the other day. Just a couple weeks ago, and I said something like, we prayed before we ate or something like that, and I cussed. And they're like, you can't cuss when you're talking to God. And I was like, no, God's like my friend. I'm, sometimes when I'm, like, frustrated, I'm driving my car, I'm like, what's up, motherfucker? Like, you know, and they were like, and I was like, it, in my house, if they need to, they can cuss, right? Like, I don't, like, censor their, if there's, like, I hate you to their sister or brother, I'm like, hey, you know, no, you don't. You love each other, hug each other, whatever. Outside of that, like my daughter's some walks around, she's like, fuck shit, fuck, whatever. <laughs> I'm like, if she's like frustrated about something, and it's appropriate. And sometimes it's just funny. But I was like, you know, we talk like that here. We're friends, right? I talk like that with my friend. God is my friend. And I was thinking about that, like, man, I wish somebody would have told me that, that there's not like this vengeful thing coming to get me, that there's just something that's my friend. More than that, like, I don't know. One big thing that I've learned over this past year is like how I feel is not right or wrong. It's just the way that I feel. Right. And I don't need to justify it or explain it or be ashamed of it or afraid of it. It just is the way that I feel. I don't know. I like seeing things with my kids now. And I, I've started doing this like over the past two years before we go to bed. I don't like pray with them, but I say, like, you know, tell me something you're grateful for, something you're proud of, and something you did to help somebody else. You know, and they do that every night. And I'm like, really what I'm teaching them is prayer, right? Like, really what I'm teaching them is a way to look at life and, like, at the end of the day, take inventory of what happened that day to see what you can do better and what you did good, right? And I don't know, it just, it, it works well for me and it works well with them. And I, like, seeing my kids be free in their thinking and feeling and acting. That's the only thing that matters to me. Right. Cause you see how we like, I talk to these adults like, Oh, I wish I could talk like you. And I'm like, I already said like, who told you that you couldn't, I know who told them they could, everybody did. Their fucking mom did their dad did their family did. And I'm like, I refuse to be that guy. You know, the, the thing that I'm coming down to that, it's really important for parents to do. And as I hear you describing this, it's just right in line with that is your responsibility as a child is, or as a parent of a child is to teach them how to be observant mm -hmm. and how to notice things. Because most of what gets people to be like, Oh, I wish I could say that are, are these paper walls and they look real, right? They look like, Oh, you're not allowed to walk through them. But imagine being in one of those Japanese tea houses, where right? Like where you realize like, wait a second, you've, you've kept me locked up in this little room here. I can just, walk through the wall and I'm in a new room and yeah, people are like, you're not allowed to do that. But the rules, like you only get to live this life once. Mm -hmm. And so if you can observe which rules are made of paper walls and which ones are actual rules that benefit you mm -hmm. to participate in, man, that's a big part of being a dad. Yeah, I agree. Man. I, yeah. I've noticed stuff with them. Somebody told me this, someone divorced, right? I was on this cruise just with the kids a couple of weeks ago and this lady just randomly starts talking to me. And again, I was like, just start talking to her about, here you go. And she's like, you know, I think that you meet people on, on purpose sometimes. I was like, yeah, I agree with that. She was like, you mind if I be frank with you? I was like, yeah. And she's like, mean, go ahead. And she goes like, uh, your daughter's going to be fucked up. And I was like, what? and she's like, you seem like a great dad. You seem like you're doing awesome stuff with your kid. Kid, your daughter's going to have some stuff that's wrong with her because of this divorce. It's just, it just is the way it is. Right. And she was like, uh, you need, you need to be her partner 
and you need to fill her up. And I'm not saying like telling her she's pretty, she's smart, she's, you know, courageous. Like I'm talking about like listening to her and um, asking her, why do you feel that way? How did that, what did that do to you? What did that, you know, what do you think about this? And like, instead of like me pouring into her, me being like pulling out of her, what she thinks and feels and validating whatever that is. And I've been doing that since then, dude. And my, my daughter, it's kind of hot and cold, you know, how she is with me sometimes, but like for the past few months, um, I, I've been doing what this lady talked about. And she said, uh, I don't know. I was at the donut shop. I had to take her to work cause school was out. And, um, I walked by her and I just picked her up and I kissed her and squeezed her. You know what I mean? And, I danced with her for a minute where I would usually be maybe a little embarrassed to do some of that stuff. But I'm like, there's nothing more important than the way this little girl feels right. Or what she's being shown. And, um, the manager at the store said, she's like, I, you put, you put Benny down and walked into the other room. And Benny goes, uh, she's like, my daddy loves me. Right. And I was like, fuck yeah, kid. Like know that, that like, I got your back. And dude, like for raising girls, mm -hmm. that is something important. I have a dad and he loves me. So I don't need that love somewhere else. I can find the right kind of love to be romantically involved with. Like, mm -hmm. I think you and I have talked about this off camera. Like I want my daughter to fall in love with a man that is more like the man I am now than the man that I was before I met her mom. And like, Cause that dude is not the guy that I want her to emulate and, or, you know, like want to be around or be attracted to. And so you, what, what I figured out from all of this is like, that guy is still in me. Right. Yeah. So you just have to make sure that the way that I, the way I'm navigating through life, I don't leverage those skills that made me that guy, mm -hmm. because those are the ones she's going to watch me using and doing not necessarily the, the one, the skills you use when you're, you know, married and connected with one person. Yeah. Like when life squeezes you, it's crazy how much they pay attention. What is a uh, divorce divorce like in a modern age? Um, for me initially there was like, uh, so I was the one that said like, I can't do this anymore. Right. Like we had a talk and, um, I just said, you know, what do you think about our relationship? And she said, you know, I, I wouldn't blame you if you left me, right? And, like, that stayed there. We talked about that. It was, like, I was so afraid of leaving because, you know, what, what would it do to my kids? And the counselor ended up saying to me, like, you know, well, what will it do to your kids to see your relationship now and them think that is what love is, you know? Because it's, like, very combative. And, um... I don't, we had a talk and I just, I was like, I can't, you know, I'm, I'm good. I left for a few months and then like, like, you know, couch hopped for a while. And then, um, went to, uh, mediation and, and did a divorce. And, um, there was personally, there was like, you know, a lot of people like you reacted to like me, like saying, admitting that I have problems, you know? A lot of people were like, shit, man, if Jason can't stay married, like, how can I? Because, like, things looked good. You know what I mean? And um, so it was uh, initially, I'll, I don't know how much to say, like, um, we went to mediation, which I thought was good to say, like, and I just went with an offer, and my offer was, like, you can have everything, right? So, like, here's all the money, here's all the stuff, and I'll take all the debt. And boom, because I was like, I don't want her to to struggle or suffer, you know, because that doesn't do anything good to my kids. And I've always, you know, relied on myself and I know I can make money. I just make money. Right. And I do stuff and I'm, I'm aware of and create opportunity. Right. So I'm like, I will be fine. I don't know that she has that skill set. Right. Which isn't a knock on her. And um, so it started out. Um, I know there's a lot of guilt, a lot of shame and, uh, you know, questioning myself 
And um, we told the kids. And I, you know, when we told the kids I had an apartment already, I took them to the apartment and they were like, awesome, whatever, right? And um, that really is their reaction. It was. It, it, that was short lived, right? I don't know if they understood the like, the finality of, of what that meant. And um, so they had problems. We got like uh, a counselor for my son and um, he was very angry. My daughter was like pretty aloof, you know, and um, I just need to be aware of the time a little bit. Boom. I got to leave in 20, 20 minutes. So like uh, he got a counselor. It helped tremendously. And um, I was at a baseball game with the kids and um, it was Albert Pujols' last game. I made like a post about this on Instagram. But I was, I was like at the game with them. They had cotton candy. It's Albert Pujols' last game in St. Louis. He was as a, as a Dodger, right? And um, I'm explaining like the game and like we're having fun and and um, but inside it was just like, man, I feel so bad for being here alone with my kids and the way the situation happened and blah blah blah. And um, this guy said to me after the game, he goes, "Hey, you got a beautiful family." And I go, uh, I was like, what? He's like, you, you three, you're a beautiful family. You mind if I take a picture for you? And I was like, and it was like, it, the first occurrence to me that like, oh, this is my family. It's us three. You know, it's not like a broken thing. It's, this is just what the family looks like right now. And it was like, I believe in God, like I've said, and like, I think God talks through other people. I don't think that God gives people messages or maybe it hasn't. I don't know. The way he communicates to you. Yeah. Like, and it was this stranger saying like, you're a family. It's beautiful. You're a good dad. And I was like, it was the first time that I saw it for myself, you know? And from then, cause I think there was like a lot of like performative emotions and actions and stuff. I was like fathering them like impotently, you know, like almost like apologetically. You know what I mean? Like depressed. I was super depressed. And that was the first time where I was like, oh, this is a choice at this point. You know, this is a choice at this point to like stand up, own this situation fully and make the best of it. And it's actually pretty good, you know, and I am pretty good and I am better than I think I've ever been. Not I think, I know I'm better mentally, emotionally just like thought life and like, I'm not perfect by any means, but like, I'm better than I've ever been. So like, that's okay to own that too. I don't need to be apologetic about it. I don't know. So it hasn't been easy. And I think that some of that stuff like COVID and the courts being shut down, exacerbated like wait times and stuff, you know, it's, it, it takes a long time. And um, I don't know. I'm, How do you, you know, even if she's not your wife, yeah. you now have a mother of your children. Right. Like, how does that, how does that engagement go? Some of that stuff I can't talk about. It had not that has, it's been messy for sure. I try. There's something, there was this book called Biff, right? B-I-F-F. And I think, I feel like in difficult situations, it's a good way to live. It's brief, informative, firm, and factual, right? So my interactions are brief. I will meet you here at this time. You know, so that's brief, informative. I gave you all the information you need. It's factual. There's not like any feeling or emotion in that. And I think like um, that's a good way to like for negotiations in general. But now we are no longer like our relationship is more like Blade and Benny LLC, you know? And so our interactions are are just are just about the kids i don't you're not a person i share my feelings with anymore i hope at some point it's like a little more cordial you know and um but it's just not right now so you're sitting here you got your checkered shoes on you got your fun you know you're always got strange gear on of course this is this is up late this is something else i'm working on what is that this is um i got tired i love st louis dude but like i don't sleep a lot and uh i'd be up late um, wanting some food and there's nowhere to eat. So I was like, man, why don't we just do this ourselves? And so probably two weeks from right now at the corner of Andover and Shaw, there'll be a, a late night restaurant at eight o'clock to four in the morning. 
and um, that's our starting hours Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. What kind of place is it? Uh, fire breakfast sandwiches, tacos. We have we're making. I, I, you're the first person to hear about this. We have a beer with four hands called beer. It's just a black can. I've always said beer. that that's what people should do. I don't want to make a decision. I just want to buy beer. beer. Yeah. I, I just want to have deodorant. Right. That's what <laughs> this is. So it's like brutalism, right? In this can of beer, beer and the sandwich is like, uh, we initially thought like, this is what the sandwich is. Like, this is how you're getting it. You know what I mean? Boom, boom, boom. So it's like simple breakfast sandwiches, with really quality ingredients, reasonably priced and uh, up late. So who's, who's the creator of the sandwiches, the food that's there. Who's so the- I'm a very small part of it. Right. Okay. I'm like 20. I've like had a lot of guidance with it, but there's a you don't need to accredit it. You, you make strange donuts, dude. <laughs> like if you're the creator of the food, no, I think there's, that's a guy, okay. there's a guy who works with me right now. Um, who's worked with me for a while and he was bringing in food all the time. And I was, I said to people all the time, I'd say in front of him, like, you know, I don't have enough room for this guy to move up. Right. Like, and then so I'd try to like hook him up with other businesses and stuff like that. And then one day I was like, look, you want to open your own place, dude? And he was like, it's a dream of mine. I'll tell you about this. It's a dream of mine to own a diner. And I was like, shit, it's always been a dream of mine. And so I was listening to this podcast by like, I got interviewed and I was like, man, I talked about all these things. The only thing that hasn't come true in my life, right. Is that I don't own an NBA team, right. All these goals that I've set, you know, I was like, man, I want to have like a little place in like a little condo in Demond and uh, a big farm and a diner. And like, I'm like, holy shit, I've manifested all of that. You can only manifest it if you have the dream. You yeah. can't manifest it if you don't have the dream. Is this on me right now? I'll have an NBA team in St. Louis. That's it. I'm going to own an NBA team. I mean, that'd be awesome. I yeah. would come to those games. I don't even. Oh, I, I, it'd be so badass. So. Up late, I've been working on that. But you were saying my shoes, my sweatpants. Well, you like you're all like you were eating a sandwich and you'd be like, "Don't worry about getting me napkins. I got my sweatpants." Oh. Then you flip around your hat and it says Ferrari on it. So explain to me this like juxtaposition. Oh. Ferrari's <laughs> like super shishi, like um, I have a Ferrari. Yeah, the um, yeah, I have a Ferrari. Tell me about owning a Ferrari. I never, I never met anybody that has a Ferrari. Really? <laughs> no, man. I went into, um, I went, there's a Ferrari dealership that opened in St. Louis and I wanted a Porsche a while ago and I went to buy one and, um, I, uh, these people laughed at me, you know, I dress like this. I'm, I don't care. Right. This isn't like people like, oh, like, I, I don't know. Like, I'm not trying to like dress up in a certain way. I just dress comfortably. I'm very rarely since being single. I'm like, oh, I need to like get some shit and like look cool. You know what I mean? And I'm like, I've sold that stuff, right? Well, those attract the wrong people. Yes. Dude, completely. One of this dude was like, hey man, just so you know, um, you're a fucking check now, dude. You know? And he's like, and that's how these girls are gonna look at you. Right. And so be careful, right? And it's like a dude I knew loosely. And he was like, but he knew me loosely and of me, you know. And like the way that I am with people. And he was like, you need to be careful, dude. You're going to get caught up. Anyways, I went in, I went, I have an 86 Toyota pickup. I've just been hustling, dude. I literally. Yeah. But last time I saw you, you had a minivan. And I still I have a minivan. Okay. I have a $6,000 minivan out there. Okay. I my, Yeah. I paid $6,000 for this minivan and I'll probably have a minivan forever. Right. Everything that I buy, everything I do. We want to talk about money and like mindset and stuff like that. Everything that I do, I buy in the hopes of selling it later for more money. Right. Flat out. So like watches, clothes, home, cars, you're buying art. value. That's underappreciated. Yes, for sure. Always, always. There's five words like, uh, can you do any better? Right. In a negotiation that if you like have zero education or th- those five words will make and save you more money than a college education. If you can come up with the balls enough to say, can you do any better? Right. So anyways, dude, I was like, I have this 86 toy to pick up. I was just buying cars, buying art, selling everything, dude. Cause I was like, shit, I'm broke. I gave her everything literally straight up. I end up like getting some art and selling it. I followed this, this, uh, Instagram account called tax collection and another Instagram account called love Watts. 
and they would highlight new artists, right? And some of them were already like very well known and stuff, but some of them would have like 1,500, 5,000 followers, whatever, right? And so if I liked the art, I'd go on there, I'd link, link immediately to their website, and I would buy some of their art, you know? That's because you've got an eye for what other people see. Like that, that's one of your truly unique gifts is that you can see something and see what other people will see. I see opportunity for sure. Right. Like a hundred percent. And so I would go, I wouldn't buy the art just cause like on speculation, I buy it cause I like it. Yeah. Right. And so I'm like, I like this. People will like this. So I'd buy a piece of art for $500, $700. And at one point I bought a piece of art. Like I got money to buy it. I, I borrowed. I'm like, Hey dog, I need to borrow some money. This is one of the first flips that was a hit. I, I from like I just left. You know, I have this little apartment. I have the six thousand dollar minivan, and um, I bought a piece of art for twenty eight thousand dollars. I borrowed the twenty eight from a friend, and I sold it two weeks later for forty nine thousand. Right, and so it gave me yeah, and it gave me enough money to like buy an apartment, get a TV and a couch and a fucking bunk bed for my kids. Straight, you know, and like. I went to that's hustling, man, dude. And so I just kept doing that. So I would buy these pieces of art. And then like, you know, uh, two weeks later, these people who had 5,000 followers now have 50,000 and their inventory is sold out. And now what was 500 is, is 6,000, you know? And I'm like, boom, I just, man, you are a whole new man. Like I'm, (laughs) I, I like, I do not want to cut this off, but 20 minutes ago, you said you had 20 minutes. Is it really that long? No, let's roll real quick. I'll tell you, I want to tell you one more, or if you want to keep going. I'll keep going. Cars, real quick, what happened? They, I had, I bought a a truck online. So I was selling cars. I bought a, uh, again, I took that money from the, um, selling the art. I bought a new Bronco. I sold it. I drove it a mile away and I sold it. I took it to the auction the next day. I made $24,000 on it. Right. So I took the 50. The 49, I bought a Bronco, sold that 76,000 is whatever. I sold it for 76,000. And then I just kept fucking going. And then I bought, um, so I'm like buying cars and art and clothes and whatever and just flipping it. And uh, anyways, I they opened this Ferrari dealership and they're still like painting the building. And I walked in there with my kid. I have an 86 toy to pick up. I bought for 4,000. It's like 20 grand, right? That's boom. And the uh, and no miles on it is awesome. I got it from some farmer in Illinois. And I drove in with the Toyota pickup, which all the mechanics came out were like, holy shit, you know, but the, the manager guy was a fucking prick. And, um, he's like, what do you want? And I was like, I want you to sell me a car. And he goes, uh, and he laughed at me. I was like, dude, just so you know, uh, cause they laughed at me when I went to buy the Porsche one night, but I, I knew the guy who owned the building and he was like, do this. He was like my mentor. Anyways, they end up laughing. What did he tell you? What is the do this? So he was like, you know, get agree on the price and then ask him about leasing it. You know, he's like, these cars appreciate, you'll be better off leasing this than buying. Right. And so he's like, put you in a better negotiating position. Anyway. So when I asked to lease the Porsche at the end, they laughed and I was like, I know, I know I make more money than you dude. Right. Like, I don't, I don't like get validation from that, but you're like trying to treat me like I'm a fucking white trash piece of shit. And like, and so I just left or whatever. And I bought something else. Right. I ended up telling the Ferrari guy that, there happened to be all these influencer dudes up at the store, at the Ferrari store. When the dude, again, like, scooted me out back to my Toyota pickup. And he said, um, he said, uh, uh, I'm, I'm walking out, and there's all these influencer guys there to, like, do stuff for Instagram and take photos and all this crap. And when I walked outside, they were like, Jason Bach, what's up, dude? <laughs> you know, and they got pictures of me and stuff. And then they end up calling me like, hey, man, uh, we'd like you to come back in. And then I went and met another guy who's like the current manager there who's awesome, who's an awesome guy. And um, dude, this is the ultimate pretty woman moment, right? When you walk back, back into the store that they oh, protected you. Yeah, I walked in, dude. He was like, this is this is Mr. Bachman. Get him some snacks and a coffee. And the uh, and and I ended up like, um, you know, there's something called the Ferrari family. Right. And it's like a very small list of people that they sell new cars to. And if you see somebody drive, you know, if somebody gets a new Ferrari, like they're basically getting paid to drive that car, right? Because the Ferrari will buy those cars back, usually at a premium from you. And then they mark it way up and sell it to the doctor. You know what I mean? Who sees the donut guy driving it. And it was like, I want a fucking Ferrari. You know what I mean? And so, and then you just keep getting cars. So again, I was like, 
Hey, dog, I need some money. <laughs> and so, I don't know. I just hostile. I want to ride in a Ferrari, man. I think that'd be fun to I'll take you. Really I would love riding that. a Ferrari. Jason, man. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming by, dude. Always good. Ah, ah, ah.